Welcome to Art Stars Explores, our province of play. My name is Kay Slater, and I'm the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in Schools. Every month, we pick a new theme to explore together through art making and play. In these workshops, you can watch along any time you have time to make, or listen, or just watch. We encourage young people, families, and creative people of all ages to join us every week on Saturdays at 11 a.m. as we release a new episode. These videos are for you, whether you want to join us on Saturday when they become available or any time you want to make. We're so glad you're watching. Have you missed a week? Check out artstarts.com slash explores dash online or any of our videos on YouTube or Facebook to check out an episode you've missed. Okay, let's explore together. Before we begin making, let's review the three rules of explores. We've got rules in quotes here because they're less rules and more like guidelines or things that we like to have in mind before we start making together. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by checking in with ourselves every day before we start making. Maybe we didn't have a good night's sleep or we're feeling really good today. Whatever it is, we want to take the time to check in with ourselves. We also practice respect by doing the same thing for each other. And if we're not making alone, we're making with other grown-ups or other youth or friends or classmates. We want to practice respect by asking them how they're feeling as well, so we can be mindful of each other while we make together. Another way we practice respect is with our tools. That can be about putting them away when we're all finished or using them safely. If somebody else is waiting for a turn to use a tool, we can use our words or our signs and share. We can respect each other by asking how long they'll need the tool so we can move on to something else, or if we need it now, we can let them know when we will be done and tell them we will pass them the tool when we're finished. We can also practice respect by acknowledging the land. So this space that you see here is my studio space. And I'm on the stolen or unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations as an uninvited guest on these lands. One of the ways I practice respect is by acknowledging where I'm coming from and to be respectful of the lands, waters, and to the indigenous people who are here and who have been here since time immemorial while I have access to these lands. You can practice respect by finding out the territories and lands where you are watching and making from today, and by being the best guest you can and respecting the host nations, the lands, and waterways where you live. The second rule is that nothing is for keeps. I encourage you whenever possible to take things from the recycling bin. You can take paper that's already been drawn on, or has writing on the back, or is ripped, and then you don't have to feel worried about ripping it up yourself or crumpling it or just trying something out. It doesn't have to be good or perfect the first time because it's not for keeps. And when we're all finished, I encourage you to take it apart. That helps really make it so that it isn't for keeps because if you know you're gonna take it apart at the end, you don't have to make any finished thing. You can try all the things and ways of making. Our last rule is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or even to turn out bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful and creative ideas are good, regardless of what happens after we try something. If you already know how something is going to turn out, if you've done it before, we can be open to trying something completely new and practice surprise. And if it doesn't turn out, that's okay, it's not for keeps. These are the three rules that we like to keep in mind when we explore together every week. Okay, let's get making together.
Hello, and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Alyssa, and I am the Gallery and Public Programs Manager at Art Starts in Schools. This month, we're exploring the theme of collage. Last week, we learned from Kay what the meaning of the word collage is. Do you remember what it means? So collage comes from the French word colle, which means glue. But we also learned that there's so many different ways that we can glue or stick things together. Today, we're going to be exploring how we can stick letters together to make pictures or words. So we'll be making wordy pictures. What you'll be needing today to follow along with me is some paper. And if you've made with us before, you know that we like to use paper from the recycling bin. So this paper is actually from a grocery bag that I used earlier this week. And I'm gonna be using it to make today with you. You'll also be needing mark makers. Mark makers are anything that you can use to make a mark on a paper. So a pen would be a mark making tool. A pencil is a mark making tool. But we can also use all kinds of different things. Mud, for example, would be a mark making tool. So feel free to get creative. The last thing that we need today are scissors. If you're going to be using scissors today, make sure that you have permission from those that you're making with to use the scissors. If not, don't worry, you can always tear paper apart, which in my opinion is a lot more fun. So let's get started. Earlier I said that we are going to be sticking letters together to make pictures and words. And I'm going to introduce you to a few different ways that we can collect or find letters today. So some letters we might find will be in written words. For example, my name, Alyssa, has six letters hidden inside of it. I have an A, L, Y, S, S, A. A repeats itself two times and S repeats itself two times. And these six letters come together to make the word Alyssa. It's as if these letters are glued together to make my name. What letters are glued together to make your name? Another way that you can collect letters today is by finding letters that are hidden inside of all of the objects that are around you. So for example, I have a pen here. A pen is made up of three letters. Can you think of what three letters we need to make the word pen? So to make the word pen, we need P, E, N. If you speak an additional language other than English, you might know this object by a different name. And that name might have more than three letters and the letters might be very different from the letters P, E, N. In Portuguese, the word pen is translated to caneta and caneta has six letters. So that's a different way that you can also explore finding letters today. Other words have multiple letters, like scissors. Scissors is a little bit of a tricky word to spell. Can you think of what letters we need to glue together to make the word scissors? For scissors, we need S, C, 
I S S O R S. There are four, four S's in the word scissors. Okay, let's start collecting letters. I'm gonna use some paper and a mark making tool. I think I'm gonna start with a highlighter, but I might switch which mark making tool I use depending on how I feel. So we're gonna take a moment to notice the things that are all around us while we're making. They might be things that we can smell, that we can touch, that we can hear, that we can see. What are the things that you notice that are all around you? I can hear birds that are singing outside. I can feel different objects that are in my maker space. I can see a lamp that is in front of me and I can smell flowers that are in a vase that is right next to me. What are the things that you've noticed are around you? Can you think of what letters are hidden inside of these things? So one thing that I've noticed is around me is a lamp and lamp has four letters hidden inside of it. It has L, A, M, and P. When you're collecting letters, you might choose to just collect one of the letters that is inside of the word. For example, I could have also just collected the letter L if I wanted to, or Maybe just the word, the letter M. Maybe I wanted to collect just three letters, L, M, and P. It's totally up to you which letters you want to collect from the objects that are around you. So together, let's see how many letters we can collect. Let's go. All right, these are the letters that I've just collected from the objects that I've noticed are around me. What letters did you collect? Do we have any of the same letters? What letters did I collect that are also on your list? What we're gonna do with these letters is we're going to now take them apart. So you can either cut or tear the letters apart to make individual letters that we can use to make new words. All right, let's go.
have a lot of letters to play with now. What letters do you have to play with? So now that I have all these different letters, I can start playing with them by changing the, the order that I put them in to make all kinds of new words. Do you see any words that I can make with these letters? Maybe I want to take the letters C, A, and P to make the word cap. Hmm. Maybe I want to take the letters S, A, C, whoops, and K to make the word sack. I already have two new words that I didn't have before. Neither of these are objects that I have here in my space. But suddenly by gluing or sticking these words together, these letters together, I now have two new words that I didn't have before. You may also want to make words in a language other than English. Hmm. If I take the letters B, U, C, or I could take this C, and H, I've just made the word Buch, which means book in German. I also have the letters B O O K that make book in English, but if I want to scramble them to make something new, I can try something like that. So the goal of this game is to see how many different words we can make. You can even unscramble something that you've already made. So although I made the word sack, maybe I actually want to make the word back. Or I could make the word track. Can you think of different things that I could do to make these letters into a new word? I take away the letter T. Now it's rack. If I add the letter L, now it's lack. There's so many different words that I can make with the letters that are in front of me. So I'm going to play with these letters for a little bit, and I hope that you play along with yours too. Here I go. All right, I've made a few different words. I have goat, clock, map, pup, bottle, and hour. None of these words are words that I had before. What words did you create that you didn't have before? Now, when I look at these words, they're all a little bit random. I have a goat, a clock, 
a map, a pup, a bottle, and an hour. How do these words fit together? Are there any ways that I can stick these words together to create a story, to create meaning between them? The word hour and clock can stick together because they both are part of the same, they're both different words that we use to talk about time. A goat and a pup are both animals. A bottle, a map, and a clock are all objects. What kinds of meaning can you create by connecting the words that you have in front of you? Now, I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to see if there's some way that I can make a story using these words. What story can I make between these six words? Maybe it's a story about a pup who gets lost and is looking for their friend, the goat. And maybe the only way for the pup to get to the goat is by using a secret map that's hidden in a bottle, perhaps. Hmm. That perhaps the pup is running out of time. They only have one hour left um, before they can find the goat. Now, what would be a reason for why the pup only has one hour to figure out how they can find the goat? Maybe there's a boat that the pup needs to catch. I could use the letter B here and create the word boat as well. Perhaps there's a boat that's leaving in one hour and the pup needs to figure out how to get to that boat in the next hour by using the secret map. But where is the secret map? Is the map hidden in a bottle in a tree? Is it in the ocean? Is it in the pup's backpack? Where is the map hidden? Perhaps the pup finds the map inside the bottle in a lake that is near their house. And as soon as the pup finds the map, they're able to see where the boat is, and where it's going, and where the pup needs to go to catch that boat to find their friend, the goat. I could go on and on making a story with these words that I have. Another story might be completely different. Perhaps there is a clock that's in the shape of a goat. Maybe there's a bottle that, um, that is shaped like an hourglass. Maybe there's a map that is stuck inside the belly of a pup. What are different stories that I could make with these different words? What story can you make with the words that you have collected? And remember, you can always add more words if you want to. I could take more of my letters to make more words. For example, if I felt that I needed an extra word to play with, I could look at the letters here that I have and go, hmm, maybe I want to add a pie into my story because I want, when the pup goes and finds their friend, the goat, maybe it's because maybe the goat got lost in search of a pie in some foreign land and the pup wants to go find the goat 
um, and thinks that the goat is lost, but actually the goat isn't lost. They're just enjoying a really good pie. Maybe, maybe the goat has found multiple pies and when the pup goes and, and eventually finds the goat, they get to share lots of pies together. What meaning can you make by connecting the letters that you have in front of you? This is a fun activity that you can also do with a partner, whether they're in the same space as you are right now, or whether you have a way of sending the words that you've collected to them. Perhaps, the pers perhaps there's someone with you in the space that you're in right now that has been making alongside you and has different letters than you have. How can you stick together the words that you made with the words that they made? You might want to even collect the letters that you have gathered today and mail them to a friend or to a family member. This week, I'm going to be sending my words to Kay. And next week, Kay is going to be playing alongside me by using these words in our next activity. So tune in next week for another episode of Explores, um, where we will be continuing with the theme collage. We also have more collage episodes on our website, which is artstarts.com slash explores dash online or on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash artstarts or on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash art starts. We can't wait to explore with you again. And before I go, I'm going to leave my camera on while I clean up my space to practice respect for the area that I have been making today. And if you'd like, you can clean up your space along with me. <laughs>